great to be here. So um, one of Queen Elizabeth's final acts uh, was to invite you to become prime minister. You met with her just two days before she passed. What was that like? Well, I was hugely honored uh, to be asked to form a government by Her Majesty. And it was a great experience. She gave me her wisdom, uh, which she's built up over the years. I was the 15th prime minister uh, that she asked to form a government. And to have that honor is, is immense. And you know, she has made such a contribution, not just to national life here in Britain, but right across the world, so it was a it was a huge honor. You just met one on one with President Biden at the United Nations um, before leaving office. Prime Minister Boris Johnson advised you to quote stay close to the Americans, but you previously described the U.S. U.K. relationship as quote special but not exclusive, and you didn't refer to the special relationship at all in your meeting with President Biden. Do you think that the special relationship is not what it used to be? I think that. The US is an incredibly close partner of the UK. I do think our relationship is special and it's increasingly important at a time when we're facing threats from Russia, uh, increased assertiveness from China. You know, we are both freedom loving democracies. Uh, we have such a strong connection and we also need to work with our other allies in the G7 and we need to reach out to countries like India as well because we are facing uh, increased threat from those autocratic regimes. So it's very important. I had a great meeting uh, with the president. We talked about many, many issues, but the, the core of it, the core of it is our belief in freedom, our belief in democracy, and that's what we need to continue to work on because we do face an increasingly insecure world. There are people in the Biden administration who are concerned that you don't share the same belief of the special relationship that previous prime ministers have. Obviously, you know that it was Winston Churchill who came up with the term special relationship in 1946. Well, I, first of all, I'm personally a huge fan of the United States of America, and um, it's a country I've traveled a lot in. Um, it's a country that we share so many values and core beliefs in. And I'm determined that we you know, make the special relationship even more special over the coming years. And we work with our friends and allies around the world. And you know, for too long uh, after the Cold War, the free world didn't do enough to take on the challenges of autocratic regimes. I believe we've now stepped up. I think our response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, unprecedented sanctions, military aid, and I've just committed that the UK will put even more uh, military aid into Ukraine. Of course, the Biden administration has put huge amounts into Ukraine, and I really feel that we are stepping up as an alliance to take on what is absolutely appalling uh, an appalling war created by Putin. So let's talk about that because at the UN you called on Western democracies to stay united against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So Putin is calling for 300,000 more reservists uh, to come into, the, into Ukraine to join the fight. He insists he's not bluffing uh, when he talks about potentially using nuclear weapons. Some people think he's effectively preparing and threatening war with NATO. Have you and President Biden discussed how the West would and should respond if Putin escalates matters even more? Well, first of all, the reason Putin is doing this is because he isn't winning. You know, he made a strategic mistake invading Ukraine. And I think he has been outsmarted by the Ukrainians. We've seen uh, the Ukrainians continue to push back against the Russian offensive. And I think he didn't anticipate the strength of reaction from the free world. And we should not be listening to his saber rattling and his bogus threats. Instead, what we need to do is continue uh, to put sanctions on Russia and continue to support the Ukrainians. Because if Putin is allowed to succeed, 
this wouldn't just send a terrible uh, message in Europe and, of course, huge threats to the Ukrainian population themselves, but it also would send a message to other authoritarian regimes around the world that it's somehow acceptable like China. to invade, well, for example, but it's somehow acceptable to invade a sovereign, a sovereign nation. So this is why it's so important that we continue uh, to be resolute. Uh, we don't uh, listen to the saber rattling uh, that we're hearing from Putin and we continue to back the Ukrainians to the hill. And that's what I'm determined the United Kingdom will do. I know uh, President Biden is absolutely committed uh, from the US point of view. We've worked closely uh, with our American allies with the G7 and we will continue to do so until UK Ukraine prevails. So let's talk about another authoritarian country, China, because President Biden unequivocally said this month again that the U.S. would defend Taiwan militarily if China invades. Is the U.K. willing to make the same pledge? Well, what we are very clear about, and I was clear with President Biden, is we support and work with our G7 allies, first of all, to reduce our strategic dependency on China, and also to make sure that we are standing by our democratic allies around the world. And we are determined to work with our allies to make sure that Taiwan is able to defend itself. Well, when you say stand by, I mean, does that mean you would go as far as President Biden has gone in saying that the U.S. would defend Taiwan militarily? Would the U.K. defend Taiwan militarily if China invades? Well, what I've been clear about is that all of our allies need to make sure Taiwan is able to defend itself. And that is very, very important. And we need to learn the lessons from Ukraine. Uh, the fact is the free world didn't do enough uh, to counter Russian aggression early enough. And Putin was emboldened to start this appalling war. And we can't see that situation happen uh, in other parts of the world. But the UK, uh, does work with its allies, whether it's Japan, it's another important ally in the Indo-Pacific region, with the United States, with Canada, to make sure we have a common response. And of course, I discussed that with President Biden, and we continue to work with our allies. Let's talk about some domestic issues. The Bank of England just raised interest rates again this week and said that the UK may already be in a recession. Are they right? Is the UK in a recession? Well, that's a matter, uh, that's a matter for uh, the Bank of England and for uh, the, the, the GDP figures, our official figures. I think what is certainly true is that the world is facing a economic shock. First of all, the aftermath of COVID, and secondly, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which has pushed up energy prices. And what I'm determined to do as Prime Minister is make sure that we are doing all we can to grow our economy, all we can to attract business and investment into the UK so that we have a clear pathway to becoming a higher growth economy, more jobs, higher wages. That's what I am focused on. And in that vein, your government just unveiled a new uh, tax proposal this week uh, that would reverse plans that, uh, to raise the corporate tax rate. You've also proposed lifting the cap on bonuses uh, for bank executives in the US. Um, President Biden is taking a, a very different approach, and obviously he has a different view on economic measures such as the one you're proposing. He tweeted this week, quote, I am sick and tired of trickle-down economics. It has never worked. We're building an economy from the bottom up and middle out. And so President Biden is, in, in essence, saying that he thinks your approach doesn't work. The opposition in Parliament says you're run recklessly running up the deficit and turning your back on so-called compassionate conservatism. I don't, I don't really accept the premise of, premise of the question at all. The UK has one of the lowest levels of debt in the G7, but we have one of the highest levels of taxes. Uh, currently, we have a 70-year high in our tax rates. And what I'm determined to do as Prime Minister and what the Chancellor is determined to do is make sure we are incentivising businesses to invest. And we're also helping ordinary people 
with their taxes. And that's why I don't feel it's right uh, to have higher national insurance and higher corporation tax, because that will make it harder for us to attract the investment we need in the UK. It will be harder uh, to generate those new jobs. And you know, I want the US economy to be successful as well. I want the European economy to be successful as well. I want free, freedom-loving democracies to succeed. And one of the things that we're doing here in the UK is moving forward on our infrastructure programmes, uh, road building, uh, broadband, uh, mobile telephones. And I know that is what the administration in the US is doing as well. But of course, uh, we all need to decide what the tax rates are uh, in our own country. But my view is we absolutely need to be incentivizing growth.